Welcome back. Today, we are going to cover some tips for set up contacts in between parts without going into the 3D contact option, basically because it is extremely heavy. So let me show you guys. I have this um, setup done with 2D contacts, which we are going to cover in a bit. And I'm going to turn on one 3D contact that is is just in between this sphere and this plane and just click on play and even <laughs> the thing is kind of start moving but it's really taking quite a lot of time to be honest so no way how we can make this on a proper manner and be effective and um, having a uh, something that is acceptable for your daily day basis. So let me suppress my 3D contact that I have in here. And let's talk about the 2D contacts. Okay. So 2D contacts are usually defined by just, uh, as the comment says, 2D counters. So it's things that are just in one plane. Let me turn on my 2D sketches uh, one second. To these sketches, there we go. Okay, so you can see I have a variety of different sketches in this moment. Let me do a section view. Uh, there we go, section view. And I want to go at the center of all this. All right. So as you can see, I have a projection of the sphere. This is a this is, a, this is an sketch, this is a sketch that is on the sphere and it is just a projection of cutting edges, that's all. All right, then I got a slot drawn in here. The reason why I did a slot is because if I do the cross section of this truncated part, the program is going to give me an error because if I roll this sphere over this profile, there are going to be a point where it is in contact with two things at the same time, two of the edges. So that's something that we need to avoid to have. Instead of that, I have in a simple slot drawn. I know that I only need this portion in order to have contact with my part, but it doesn't matter. I just make a nice uh, slot of all the geometry that is going to work flawlessly because if I roll the sphere in all the positions, it is not going to touch more than one point at the same time. And the same is happening at the bottom. At the bottom, instead of <laughs> making the, the cross section of this and just projection ge projecting geometry, I'm making a slot, that's all that simple and it is on a range of movement uh, or it is in the range of movement I mean if I leave uh, this slot a little bit further to the left it is going the, the the sphere is going to try to to get to follow this because it is not making direct contact with the face of the of the plane right so uh, this part at the left is exactly this one so it has the sketch as well. So uh, let's take a quick look into one of these ones. All right, so I have my sketch. The sketch is projecting uh, this geometry in order to make an alignment of one of the lines of the slot and uh, aligned with the center. I always recommend to have fully defined the sketches on your models. Okay, let's jump back very quickly and run this with the 2D contacts in the dynamic simulation environment. Okay, so the 2D contact is just defined by two uh, selections. Let me edit, there we go. So one curve, it, the order doesn't matter, it could be any. 
And at the moment of selecting the slot, you can pick any line or arc of the slot. The program is going to identify the closed loop. That being said, I think it is important if you project the geometry as I did here at the center of this plate, you need to convert it into a reference line, making sure that this sketch only has one loop that is uh, 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 not as a reference line. <laughs> All right, let's uh, jump into the, um, just click play. And this thing is fairly um, smooth. As, as you can see, it is rolling, right? So let me let me push it back. If you see the pattern here, see whoop. <laughs> Maybe in the there, there we go. It is rolling, right? Okay. So how did I got the rolling? Because if you don't set the thing uh, correctly. Uh, the thing is not going to roll. It's just going to slide. So for do that, oh, I forgot. I'm using two, just two D contacts, two two D contacts, and it is one for the plate at the left, the one the plate at the right, and this one at the bottom. I'm not using it, or I'm not having that two D contact because of that effect. If I uh, let me suppress this guy, which is the guy that is making the magic. Let me suppress it. Let's jump into the 2D contact option. Pick this line, then pick this other one. Click OK. I'm going to hit play again to show you guys how the thing is not moving, right? The pattern is not moving at all. All right. So, how we do it is by a rolling cylinder on plane um, option. So let me delete this to the contact that I have just did and turn on this one and suppress it. Okay. So it is basically this option. Well, it is not letting me to open the drop down menu. Let me jump into here so I can show it to you guys. So we do have a plenty of options. So cylinder on plane. So clearly <laughs> you make the selection of the plane or the reference of the plane. In this case, I selected the, the entire face. And uh, after selecting the face, what I need to do is to select cylinder, which I wonder if I can select the entire sphere, the face of the sphere, instead of selecting the line. I did select the line on the previous one. Let's try out. Oh, no, it's not a cylinder. Okay, but feel the confidence that you can select the line and it is going to be accepted by the, by the, by the program as a cylinder, which is great. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much it on the uh, contacts. So as a conclusion, you can have many uh, more than three, etc., contacts on one body and that body is going to be in contact with them. And the 2D contact is not going to make or force that the geometries are going to be uh, attached to each other. They can separately move. And uh, it is a way much easier way to set up something instead of waiting for hours to let the program to solve the 3D uh, contact option. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Cheers.